So I'm looking at my sales activity dashboard inside of Dynamics 365, and I wanted to start, it off, start off by explaining what a dashboard actually is. So as you can see here by the sales activity dashboard, it's made up of different charts, elements, lists, etc., of information that I really need to see at a quick glance inside of my system. So what that means to you as a salesperson is you'd like to see those things that you're currently working on or you need to work through for the day. So it's just a nice place, a central location where you can see information that's normally in multiple locations inside the system by default. And what I mean by that is I'd have to click around and go to my opportunity view to see my open opportunities, or I'd have to go to my activities to look at the activities I have open for today, or even my calendar. And so the benefit of setting up a dashboard properly is that I put all the information that's relevant to me that I need to know on a day-by-day -day basis in a single location that's easy to read and to work through. So there are a bunch of out-of-the-box dashboards that come with Dynamics 365. And as you can see here, when I click down, my views available to me, or my dashboards available to me are listed here. And so there are a whole bunch that you can choose from. What you can also do is take an existing dashboard. So let's say you like the sales activity dashboard, but you don't use leads, for example, or you'd like to change one of the elements on the dashboard. What you can do is save as. So just like you would a Word file, you can take this dashboard, save it as something else, like Miriam's fancy dashboard, and then change it up a little bit to make it suit your needs. So I can just call the sales activity dashboard two, give it a different description if I want, and also I have the option to enable it for my mobile device. So um, if you wanna be able to access this dashboard on your mobile device or your tablet, you can choose the enable for mobile option and then click save. So what that does is it brings you to a new dashboard that you can edit because it's not a system dashboard. Uh, system dashboards would need to be edited by your administrator. What you can also do is create a brand new dashboard. So I can click on new and create a Dynamics 365 dashboard. And from here, I can choose my layout. So I can choose three columns, three columns multi-focus, four columns, two columns, three columns, et cetera. And so you might not know what option to choose You'll have to play around with it a little bit in order to figure out what best fits your needs and really is dependent upon what kind of elements you wanna to add to the dashboard. Personally, I like the two column regular dashboard because I can see a lot of information at once. Um, if you don't have good eyes, you probably wanna choose this option because it's just larger sets of information um, that you can see out at the same time. So I'm gonna choose that and then click create. So now that I've clicked on new, I'm gonna give my dashboard a name and I'll call it Miriam's Sale Dashboard. And you're gonna to wanna to click Save. And what I wanna cover now is just showing you the different types of information that you can add to your dashboard. So with this blank dashboard, you can see I have those four panes. And inside those four panes, I can choose to see different types of things. There are charts. So if I click insert chart, you can see I have different charts that I can add depending on the record types. So I can select the entity and there's a lot of information here. So really um, whatever you need to see in your dashboard, whether you're a marketing professional, customer service, um, you can choose the different kinds of records that you'd like to see. And then from there, you're going to select the associated view that you wanna look at. Remember that if you have a custom view, which we'll be looking at in the last section of this webinar, you can select that as well. So you can choose this view associated and then add that component to your dashboard. You can also preview the chart on the right. So it's really a nice option there. The second option is you can insert a list and this is my personal favorite option. I like looking at lists inside of Dynamics 365 because they give me a lot of detailed information about the records that I wanna look at. And without having to go to those different views and toggle between the entities, I can have all that information at my fingertips right on my dashboard. So you can see here, I have the same types of options. I can select my record type. And again, there's my big list of views that are available to me. So, or entities, I apologize, that are available to me. So I can see everything from user information to um, marketing information to product information, orders, quotes, invoices, accounts, et cetera. So really the world is at your convenience here. So you choose opportunities, for example, 
And then from there, once you select the entity, you choose the view. So again, I can choose a system view. So what columns do I want to see? Remember, a view is, think of it like an Excel spreadsheet. It's just a set of information that's presented in column format to give you more information about the records inside of an entity. So you want to select either a system view here, or you can choose one of your own custom views. And then, of course, you can add it. The other types of dashboard components that you can add are iframes. So if you want to insert an iframe, you're just going to simply put in the name and then pop that URL in and look at that information. I'm just going to escape out of there. And you can even insert a web resource. So you can go ahead and put in the web resource or look for it. Um, you'd have to have that set up by your admin and then put that information in there. So you can get pretty fancy if you want with the dashboard elements. The two most common types of elements that people add are charts and lists to their dashboard. And we'll be looking at the most popular items for a salesperson in the next section. So now we're gonna be adding the different elements to the dashboard that I've set up as Miriam's sale dashboard. So the first thing I wanna add is my open opportunities. And I'd like to see this in a list form. So I'm gonna select insert list. And for the record type, I'm going to select opportunities. So these are in alphabetical order. I'm just going down to the O's and I'll select opportunities. In the view, I can select different system views. So I can put everything in from closed opportunities if I wanna see those that I've closed out. I can add those that are my open opportunities. Remember, whenever you see the word my in Dynamics 365, it means it's filtered for you, the current user. So if I add my open opportunities to my dashboard, um, then I would see opportunities that are owned by me. If somebody else adds my open opportunities to their dashboard, it'll filter by them. Um, there are also just open opportunities. So maybe you want to look at all the opportunities that are currently open in your system that have not yet been lost or won. You could add open opportunities. This is a popular one for managers and also customer service reps. Recent opportunities, so those opportunities that I've recently focused on, that might be something that would be of interest to you. What I'm going to add to my dashboard are my open ones. So as a salesperson, I'd like to work through the opportunities that are still open in the system, and I'd like to see those on my dashboard. So record type is opportunities, and the view is my open opportunities. So once you select those two, you're gonna to wanna to click add. Okay, so then now that's been added. So this component of the dashboard has now been filled. In the component next to it, I can add in another dashboard element. And so I'm gonna add in my activities list. As a CRM user, I like to see the activities that I've yet to complete. So I'm gonna choose the record type to be activities. Remember activities are anything from a task to a phone call that are in the system that you have to complete. And so I can choose all activities if I wanna see everything. I can see activities that are only assigned to me, or I can take a look at my open activities. I wanna select my open activities because I don't need to see activities that I've completed yesterday. So let's say I had a list of things to do this week. I only want the items on my dashboard to show up that I have yet to complete, and so I'm going to choose open um, as the status of those activities. Let's see what other options are here under the system views. So I can also have open activities due next seven days or earlier. That's also a popular option. So if you don't need to see too far ahead in the future, you don't want to have your dashboard component bombarded with activities that you have to complete months from now, then the seven days or earlier might be a good choice. So I'll select my activities and then we'll click add. So we've added two lists. You can always add four to this particular dashboard. Um, you could put whatever types of components you'd like, but just for this bottom one on the left, I'm going to actually insert a chart. And since our organization works with leads, I wanna see a chart of leads in the system. So I'm going to select lead, and then I'm actually going to do my open leads. I wanna work on the leads that management has assigned to me as a salesperson. So I'll choose the my version of that. And I wanna see those that are open that haven't yet been converted into opportunities and accounts. And so the chart I can choose. So these are charts that are currently in the system. 
You can always have your system administrator, customizers add a different chart for you based on whatever criteria you want. So these are the canned ones. You can see that there are incoming lead analysis by month, lead generation rate, leads by owner, leads by rating, leads by source, and leads by campaign. I'm actually gonna go on the rating system. I'd actually like to see the temperature, if you will, of the leads that are assigned to me. Probably I wanna work through the hot ones first, then go to the warm, and then lastly to the cold. So I've added three components here. I'm going to actually save this dashboard. And then what we're gonna do in the next section is add a custom view and add that as our last dashboard component. So now that we've set up the dashboard elements, um, the three that we have, the open opportunities, my activities, and the leads chart by rating, let's add a custom view to our dashboard in the list format. So there are a lot of nice canned um, views in the system, but there are always views that could use improvement or that are just important to you or your colleagues. And so we're gonna be creating a view where we're looking at op my open opportunities that are $15,000 or more. And so this just gives me a quick way to see opportunities that are really valuable to me that are at a higher price point than the others in a different dashboard component. So in order to make a advanced find or a custom view, I'm going to click on the funnel in the upper right hand corner of my screen that says advanced find. And that's going to open a pop-up window. Make sure your pop-up blockers are off. And so if you've never looked at this screen, it really works based on the entity. So if you wanna make a view of accounts, you would say look for accounts. If you wanna make a view of opportunities, you're going to choose opportunities. And that's what we're gonna be doing in this example. So I'm going down to look for opportunities. And in the use save view, I'm gonna leave it as new because I'm creating a new view. And then beneath here, so what we're doing now is we're just setting the filters or how we're defining the records that are going to be shown inside the view. And so what am I basing that off of? Well, the first thing is the status is going to be open. I'm looking for opportunities that are neither won nor lost, but open in the system. So I'm going to go down to the status field and I'm going to say the status is equal to, and then I'll hit this ellipses here and select open hit the right arrow, and then once it shows up in selected values, click OK. If you want to see something other than open or multiple values, you would just simply select, let's say one and open and put it over to the right. Okay, and then I'm going to add another value here. So we're going to go down to owner. Remember owner is the owner of the opportunity. And whenever I select a user type field or owner field, it knows that I have the option of selecting current user or I could specify the user. And so equals current user is a really nice option, especially if you're setting up a system view or a view that other users are going to use. So you don't have to explicitly say the owner is Miriam. You could just say the owner is the current user and therefore whoever runs that view would filter for them. So it saves a lot of time and energy. So status is open, owner is current user, and we're gonna say the estimated revenue is greater than or equal to 15,000. Okay, and you can add as many options as you want here to your filters. Just remember that the more filters you put in, you probably have less data coming out. And you can take a look and preview the records that are going to show before you go to add it to your dashboard just so you can test it out. The operators here are all and, so it's implied that all of these things are true when it's looking for this information. If you want more information on advanced finds, check out our video on advanced finds. So the other thing I'm gonna do is I can make sure I have the right columns. I could simply click Edit Columns. And really the columns are what shows up in that list view that you're looking at. Remember for a dashboard, it's a pretty small window and so you don't wanna to add too much information to that unless you pop it out and look at it on another screen. But just keep in mind that those first few columns are pretty important that it has meaningful information in them. So what you can do with the Edit Columns is you can always remove columns that you don't want I'll remove the potential customer column, status reason, and you can always add columns as well. So you just click add columns. Let's add that actual estimated revenue. I'd like to see what that value is. And 
and actually let's add the account as well. So once you've established your columns, um, so I already have the estimated revenue, the account and the topic, that's good enough for me. I'll actually move the account over. That's pretty important. So account, topic, revenue, and then click OK. You can always add more columns if you want, like I said. And so let's just give this a test run. I'm going to click results. And there we go. So it looks like we have a um, good number of results. The estimated revenue looks as if how I expect it. I'll go back to the previous tab and we're going to save this view. And I'm going to call it Open Oppos over 15K. And you can call them whatever you want. And click Save. Okay, so now that I've saved this view, I can close my advanced find, I can minimize it, I'll just close it out for now. And we're going to edit the dashboard and add this view in. So we'll just edit the component on the lower right hand corner here. And we're going to actually, so this is a little bit different of an interface, but not a problem. We're gonna remove the chart option here and I'll select the opportunities entity. And I'm going to go to my views and choose open oppos over 15K. Perfect. I'm just gonna zoom out here. I can click OK on the screen and I'll zoom back in for you. Okay, let's save this and take a look at our dashboard. Okay, perfect. So here's the dashboard. It's the Miriam's Awesome Sales Dashboard. I have my open opportunities, my activities, my leads by source, and my opportunities that are over 15,000. Of course, I'm zoomed in a little bit right now, but you'd be able to see all this information at once on your monitor while you're looking at your screen.